Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will look at an ECG signal in the frequency domain, and then we will see what filters we can apply to fix the issues that are present in the signal. Specifically, I will address correcting the DC offset and then removing low uh, frequency noise, which is going to fix the baseline drift and then we're gonna remove high frequency noise and we'll use a notch filter to remove one specific frequency. So let's take our file and load it into MATLAB. Another way to do it would be in code to like specify the name of the, the record name and then how are you gonna access that uh, file. So this is useful if you're doing a loop then your record name here would be a vector of the different names of files that you have. There are like different ways to automate but for uh, this is not the topic of uh, this video. We want to address the noise in this signal. So we've loaded it. Let's run these commands. And then, let me actually look at the signal. Plot, as you can see here, it's called val. Let's say plot val. You can see that the um, scale is from like minus 100 to up to 200, which is actually um, scaled up so I got this signal from a database uh, in PhysioNet so usually when you download like any data it will tell you um, it will tell you if there's a gain that was applied to the signal and then you can correct for that gain so in my case uh, this signal was amplified 200 times so I'm just gonna scale uh, my signal down by dividing uh, over the gain. So now I'm creating scaling down the signal and then let's see how it looks. Because mm, I didn't run this. Let's run this. And then let's plot the signal. So this is actually the ECG signal after uh, scaling the amplitude down and then taking just like two seconds of the signal. So if you notice, if I still have figure one, so if you plot val directly, you're gonna get these numbers. So what are these numbers? These actually are the number uh, of samples, like this is sample one, two, three, until sample 3,500, actually no, a little bit more, okay? So then I, to, to properly plot it, I need it to, uh, in terms of uh, time and seconds. For that, I would need to know what is my sampling frequency and um, I can find this information again whenever I download uh, data from a uh, database it will tell you information about how the data was uh, recorded so if you're using PhysioNet or any other database check how uh, where the signals uh, recorded what is their uh, what are their, what is the sampling frequency used? Okay, so this was before we did anything. And then this here, when we uh, scaled down the signal to represent um, a biopotential, and actually like a biopotential signal with very small uh, amplitude in millivolts. And so, Let's move on. Now we plotted it in the time domain. Let's actually look at it in the frequency domain. 
So if you look at it in the frequency domain, you can see, you can spot a few issues. For example, you can clearly see the DC offset at frequency zero. We're gonna try to minimize this. You can see also that we have a peak here and the peak is at 60. So this means the signal has power line interference. And obviously it would have uh, low frequency noise and high frequency noise that we are not like, like this peak at 120, it's affecting our signal, we don't want it. So you, you, you read in the literature what is the uh, best filtering range for the type of uh, disease you're looking at or for the type of signal you um, you want to to study okay so I found a source or the source I usually use is uh, one that says you can filter from 0.1 until 100 some people actually use from 0.5 till 40. It depends again on what you want to look at. So I'm going to take a larger range. So from 0.1 to 100. But before that, let's address the DC offset. To remove the DC offset, I'm going to have my subtract from it uh, the mean. So let's look at the before and after. We do this. So you can see the original here is in blue. It is shifted down and so the DC offset uh, is negative in this case. So we're correcting that and the signal moved up. Let's see it in the frequency domain. You can see here, if you zoom in, this is the original and this is the corrected. So we removed the uh, DC offset, which happens at, or which you can see at frequency zero. Now taking the result of the previous step, which is this signal, after removing DC offset, I'm gonna take this signal and then apply the high pass filter on it so let's look at after applying the high pass filter what happened to the signal in the uh, time domain you can see it clearly uh, so what is baseline drift let me actually show you a picture here so baseline drift is when your ecg signal has a low frequency component that makes it go like this okay and this is after correction in our case our signal was not that bad when it comes to baseline drift or baseline wonder it's just like in the portion we picked here for the the first two seconds the first qrs complex is a bit off like uh, it's going a bit up so this is up and then it went down. Now after the high pass filter, you can see here this wave, there's not much change to it. This one a little bit down and this one was corrected by moving it down more than the others. So now they're more or less starting uh, or having the same baseline. They're not going up or down. Now, um let's look so the output here of the high pass filter is the signal f data one now we're gonna take this f data one and we're gonna apply a low pass filter to remove the um, higher frequency noise let's see the before and after good so this is very clear in the frequency domain these frequencies above 100 are heavily reduced or blocked. Let's see the effect in the time domain. We can't uh, see much. 
let's see if we zoom in yeah you can see a little bit so this is the LPF in black you can see a bit of smoothing you, if I zoom in here look before the high pass there was this sharp here now it's very smooth okay so we essentially removed the uh, high frequency noise which appears like those like small uh, we can call it zigzag lines so as we saw earlier the low frequency noise is just like high, like big waves uh, the high frequency noise is like this okay and with the filter we were able to smooth it now if you look at our frequency domain we can see one issue still remains which is the power line interference here at 60 so we want to remove that how do you remove it we use a notch filter and we choose the uh, frequency the notch frequency at 60 if I had my peak sometimes like it depends on the country that the signal was recorded in uh, for some countries, the interference is at 50. So you would see a peak here at 50. So uh, this is why it's important to look at your signal uh, in the frequency domain to decide your action uh, or your approach to filtering. Now let's remove the 60 hertz. I'm getting an error. All right, so it says undefined function IR notch for input arguments of type double. So I did the filter in my other computer and I had the DSP uh, toolbox installed, but in this computer, I don't have the DSP toolbox, which is a good opportunity to, to show you how to um, address issues like this. So in here, it didn't tell me that I'm missing the DSP toolbox, which is a, di a digital signal processing toolbox toolbox but from experience I know that this is the issue so for you to know actually there's a little the, there's a trick to have MATLAB tell you this explicitly you need to start you need to clear and clean everything and then run it again yeah this time it tells you it requires the DSP system toolbox so if you're running into an error that, uh, and you're not sure why are you getting this error message about IIR notch, uh, it's usually helpful to look up what kind of toolbox is IIR notch uh, part of. Or you can do this trick of starting fresh, and then it will tell you uh, which toolbox you need to install. Let's go ahead and install it. Okay, so I'm going to hit install and then I'm going to add my details. Or like log into my account. Okay, we are back now with the DSP uh, toolbox installed. So let's run first section. Second, second section. And then correcting DC offset and then taking the output of the correction, feeding it to a high pass filter, and then feeding the output of the high pass filter to the low pass filter. And then finally here the notch. Like as you can see the uh, peak at 60 was removed and was replaced with a dip so it was heavily reduced let's now compare the original versus the um, processed signal we removed high frequency we removed the notch we removed low frequency dc offset and in the time domain this is what it looks like the harsher your limits for the filters the smoother the result will be 
but then it's at uh, the risk of losing some information that you might need. So it's better to uh, look into the ret- literature and see uh, for your specific application what range uh, can you use.